Florida, Georgia, game two of the Super Regionals. The Gators seniors with their backs to the wall. A Women's College World Series, three-peat, it's still alive. A little room for air, they'll go with their ace. Ocasio in this one. Georgia, who would they pitch? It will be their ace as well. Chelsea Wilkinson coming off a complete game three hitter yesterday. Chelsea, the four-time All-SEC pick. A familiar role in back-to-back -back games as we take a look at the Gainesville Super Regional bracket. Winner here advances to take on the winner of Florida State, Utah. That game in Tallahassee currently on ESPNU. The Capital One lineup for Florida. You see Ocasio, middle of the order, hitting and pitching. Yeah, it's the highest Ocasio has been in the lineup, and you're talking about a Florida lineup that really struggled yesterday for any offensive production. They're really relying on her in that five spot to do something, and she's had some great at-bats for them. Lorenz, one of the most talented freshmen in the country. We'll try to get him jump-started, and Wilkinson very comfortable in this role. Yeah, Wilkinson wants the ball in her hand, and why not go with your ace? And Lorenz takes strike one. Tana Gehrig calling balls and strikes. Lorenz leads the team in batting average. A stellar year, and it shows the confidence Coach Walton has to lead her off. You know, as a leadoff hitter, you want to work deep in the count. You want to see a lot of pitches. Wilkinson doing a good job getting ahead here in Lorenz, but Lorenz has continued throughout this postseason to work counts deep even when she gets behind, and that's what you want in a leadoff hitter is somebody who can see a lot of pitches. Bouncer to third, Alyssa DiCarlo. In time, just in time. And one down. Chelsea Wilkinson pitched three straight days in the Athens Regional, and their team came out victorious every time. Wilkinson just did so well yesterday. She brings it low to mid 60s. Isn't going to blow it by you, but she moves it through the zone. She changes speeds, and that movement kept these Florida batters off balance. She also has to maintain her tempo, which she did so well yesterday. Wilkinson wasn't dominant, but very effective in the victory yesterday. Battled well with runners on base. You see that seven innings pitch, just the three hits, three walks, two strikeouts, and 108 pitches, but 48 of them came in the last four innings. Bounce straight back. Stewart in a very unique situation. Look at this. Her entire career, she's never not hit leadoff. Coach Walton, you have to look and, and make a decision on that with Kelsey Stewart. Is she producing the way she needs to, or do you change it up a little bit? And I think in this case, to put Lorenz out there, who's been having better at bats than Stewart has here in the postseason, made a lot of sense. And if Lorenz can get on base, Stewart still being able to produce would be a big, big thing in the two spot. This is a two-team All-American being shifted in the lineup, and she hits it hard to right field, and it's flagged down. Sydney Emanuel working towards the line, two away. Very good team defensively, the Emanuel sisters. And then in the middle, Lazier has not made an error as she covers a lot of ground in center field. And the infield much improved, and mostly because of Alex Hugo. She's been great. You see her here at second base. Kirsty Merritt now, the Gators center fielder, strike one. How do they get that bad taste out of their mouth after struggling offensively yesterday? You know, you have to go to work. Florida has lost games before, while not a lot of them. You just have to come back, get better at what you didn't do yesterday, and be stronger today. And Coach Walton is so good at that. He's so good at being able to communicate with these players what didn't work, what the failures were, so that they can change them into successes the next day. 608 wins, back-to-back -back World or College World Series championships as Merritt takes that, that one inside. Ball, Wilkinson ahead, getting ahead on Merritt. Last night she faced 29 hitters through the first or second pitch strike on 26 of them. 90% of the batters saw a good pitch first or second pitch, and that's something that Florida should pay attention to. One-two fouled off. 
you like the decision here, game two, you ride the train after that, that game one with Wilkinson, and here she is again. Yeah, you know how I always look at it with pitchers is, did you make adjustments in game one? Did the batters make adjustments? We didn't see the batters do it. We saw Wilkinson take charge the entire game. And it's at a point right now with Wilkinson is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Keep moving your pitches the way you need to move your pitches and go with your ace if they haven't found, if Florida has not found a way to hit her. Coach Lou Harris-Champer looking on 16th season at the helm. She has 984 wins in her stellar coaching career. Hit foul and out of play. Giving a look over there, Courtney Emanuel. Georgia, a surprise win in game one. Stunned a lot of people across the country. Your colleagues checking in with you. <laughs> what happened was the question. You know, there was so much of, I can't believe it went that way. And obviously, the number one overall seed, they're looking to three-peat. Everything's going in their direction for Florida. And Georgia comes in calm, quiet, confident. Comes out and shuts them out. Great pitches like that. Wilkinson off to a good start, a one, two, three inning. And here comes the player of the year finalist, Alicia Ocasio, the nation's leader in ERA. She'll be in the circle for the Gators, hoping to get off to a good start in game two. Half an inning in the books, Florida and Georgia are scoreless game two of this Super Regional. Hi everybody, Trey Bender alongside Jenny Ritter, the national champion pitcher at Michigan. The big story, Ocasio, we know about her and her success, but Wilkinson going again, back-to-back -back starts for the dogs. What do you think of that exactly. decision? Exactly. Well, postseason, you have to work hard and make sure that you put your ace in there when you can. Wilkinson did so well yesterday. She spun the ball. She made Florida batters miss it, and that's what you want to bring in today. When she can miss it, that's when she's good. Well, Coach Champer, a lot of confidence in her, and this is a familiar role. She's been back-to-back -back four different times this season as a pitcher. And Lou obviously believes in her. We thought we could see Brittany Gray, their number two hurler, but that's the decision as we look at the Capital One Georgia starting lineup. Maeve McGuire coming off a three hit effort in game one. Yeah, Maeve McGuire was on fire and you need to do that as a DP. You need to stay strong, but DiCarlo did a good job getting on base. Yosefa drawing walks allowed Maeve to do this. Get these big timely hits when she needed to, driving one into right field, scoring DiCarlo and then answering her next at bat, hitting this ball back up the middle again and scoring to Carlo again, who went two for three as well. And so you're talking about a team effort here. Runners able to get on base and Maeve McGuire able to come through with timely hitting. This is a tough-minded group. A lot of it revolves around their seniors, blue-collar attitude. And they were having some fun, though, yesterday. And you could sense that not just at the plate, but in the field as well. Sydney Emanuel to lead things off. And you know, I think that, that Trey, when you see a team that comes in with the confidence that Georgia had, the fun that they were having, they look at this as just another SEC matchup. They've played tough competition. And there's a bouncing ball that finds its way into left field, placed perfectly by Emanuel, the SEC batting average leader. Gets him off to a good start. And this is exactly what you want to do if you're Emmanuel in the leadoff. She just finds a way to drive that ball on the ground, get a high hop on it. Voss not able to catch up to it, gets herself on. Huge for Emmanuel to lead off against Ocasio. Now her sister, Courtney Emmanuel, they are a tough one-two punch. Struggled in game one, but you get them on the base pass and they can really wreak havoc out there. Yeah, definitely their speed really matters. You got Monroe that's going to have to be heads up behind the plate. Courtney, a sophomore from Missouri City, Texas, and Sydney, a junior. As you look at Ocasio, who's just had a phenomenal season, her only loss in relief this season. I mean, that's definitely some confidence that you want to bring if you're the Gators, is knowing that your pitcher is in that circle right now, has not lost a game that she has started yet this season. And when you talk about confidence, defensive or offensive, all the offense needs to do is push a run across or so and count on Ocasio to do what she's been doing best all season. They're in at the corners here. Georgia with a base runner. And 
She went fishing outside part of the plate, one down. Alicia Ocasio, one of three finalists for the USA Softball Player of the Year. Ocasio, just such a strong pitcher. She can bring some heat. We saw in that last pitch, she throws in the upper 60s. She's going to keep that ball down. She's a drop ball thrower, which means that she's going to get a lot of ground balls. And she has multiple strikeout pitches, which I think, Trey, is the most important thing that she has. She can throw you a screwball strikeout, a drop ball strikeout, and then go up in that zone, too. And when you have multiple strikeout pitches, it's hard for these batters to really make adjustments and know what they need to sit on and drive. Melissa DiCarlo. The freshman from Glendale, Arizona at the plate. Really overshadowed by some of the veterans, but her numbers are very impressive. First team all SEC. And the most RBIs in the nation for a freshman. She rips it foul down the left field line. And DiCarlo has just continued this super regional to have incredible at bats, really drives the ball well. Even her foul offs are good hard drives. And DiCarlo went two for four yesterday. And two key at bats, she got herself on base for Maeve McGuire to come through. And you talk about her teammates overshadowing her. She was the reason why runs scored yesterday. Inside, check swing, and down the line, Cody Little says no, she did not go. And DiCarlo's bat passed across the plane of the plate. Take a look at this. The bat, when she drives it through, she holds it back out, oh, does cross the plane of the plate. It is something that she pulled back quickly, sometimes hard to see. Much to the chagrin of the orange and blue clad fans here, they're Gators fans. There's a ground ball to short, could be two. Voss fumbles it, and everyone is safe. Alex Voss at shortstop, and that looked like a routine play there. Yeah, and we've seen, we saw Stewart do that yesterday at the shortstop position. This is something that is uncharacteristic of Florida, very strong defensively. This one, though, speed will kill you sometimes. You are quick. You saw the Emmanuel go to second base. Speed, she had to be quick. Voss had to pick that up as quickly as she can to make a quick play. Couldn't do it. Took her eye off the ball. Caused that error there. Again, Trey, speed is great. Sydney Emmanuel just on fire. Voss has been used as a defensive player, a freshman from Coral Springs, Florida. Maybe caught up in the moment. Big, big game here. And let's see if the dogs can take advantage with the top power hitter you could say in the country. Hard to argue, leading in home runs and RBIs. What a year for Tino Yosefa. And they threw to Yosefa yesterday. She did draw some walks. But she is a key hitter to be up with two runners on base. Big cut right there. You do have to think about Florida in this situation. We're talking about top of the first inning, Georgia getting runners on base like they did yesterday. How does that feel to Florida and the pressure? High pop fly, center fielder Merritt has a beat on it, makes the catch, and the runners will stay put, two down. You saw Merritt out there, Manning center field. Really good. Senior leader plays hard and covers a lot of ground. And Stewart has played shortstop and also second base. She's at second today with Voss at short. Monroe has as good an arm as anyone at catcher. So now Alex Hugo, the senior leader for the Bulldogs, a chance to drive one in. Jenny, we saw Alex yesterday. She didn't. She had a sacrifice bunt. Didn't do a lot offensively, but her leadership and what she did in the field, I thought, really sparked the team. Exactly. She kept them in the game defensively, and that one bunt she did have, Trey, was beautifully executed and a key point in the game for McGuire to hit to Carlo in. Numbers very good. Pales in comparison to her previous two years at Georgia, but still really solid. And she's kind of the heart and soul of this team in so many ways. Yeah, just the energy, the leadership that she brings. She can be a spark. The second team All-America a year ago and hit 389. Big spot right here for Georgia. Pulled foul. 
He's got to be one of the best athletes in the game and could play any sport. Look at this with the football. Yeah, it's not just softball. It's punting, passing. She can run routes, and then she can dive for plays in the field. Look at the energy that she has. I mean, what a personality. And that, again, the leadership that she brings on the field and just the love and passion for what she does, that drives you a long way. 2-2 Two -two popped up. Sky high, Monroe calling for it with a mask off and a collision, and the ball falls. It's ruled, it's a rule of fair ball. It's, it was right near the plate and a collision, a miscommunication problem. felt like Trey you and I could see that Monroe had that call the entire time you can see here Monroe making the call Fuller coming in not hearing her in a collision and they have pointed this as a foul ball that's the official word we've just gotten here is Lou Harris Champer arguing for Georgia here it is again and it's important to get this right again take a look at this call right on that line when it hits the gloves. You see what Emmanuel is about to score. And the assistant coach, Tony Baldwin, has been tossed along with this. Monroe getting hit in the head as she comes down. Emmanuel scoring. They, they called it. They called it a foul ball. That's the call on the field. And I, th I think that's the correct call. It was close, so it was hard to see, but Coach Champer really fighting for it. Every run counts in this game. It's early in the game, and you have got to battle. And Tony Baldwin exiting, and he still has several words after that pop up. It would have been a big run. And Tony Baldwin just fired up, and he's part of this staff that the team relies on, and you know, definitely fighting for his team. A lot of emotion in this game, Trey. You're talking about, you know, someone's season is going to come to an end today, and, and, and two rivals in an SEC matchup. I mean, there's a lot going, and a lot of energy, and a lot of high emotions. You always get that with Georgia, Florida, but when it's a super <laughs> regional with this on the line, and Florida with their backs to the exactly. wall. Exactly. There's so much. Their backs to the wall. Florida's in their home field. The crowd is fired up. There's tons of Georgia fans here with Gator fans. So two and two to Hugo. And she laces it to left field for a base hit. They're going to hold the runners. Bases will be loaded. Emmanuel thought about it, stays put, bases full now after the single by Hugo. And look at that energy that Hugo bring. Exactly what she needed to do in that situation was drive a hit somewhere in the field. Keep that energy, that fire that Georgia has right now. She turns on this pitch beautifully. Inside pitch, turns on it, gets herself on base. Emmanuel held up at third. Bases loaded for Georgia in the momentum. Man, there's some energy here. And here's the star of game one, Maeve McGuire, who drove in a couple. She takes a big cut at the first one. And this is why it was so important for Hugo to get on. Bases loaded. Maeve McGuire has just been on fire. And for her to have a good quality at bat here, this is the best situation for Georgia. One and one. McGuire had struggled prior to last night's game. She was one for 27. But look at what she did against the Gators in game one. Nicasio here, she just has to be tough here in the circle. She's the one that needs to take charge, get a big strikeout, get a big out. Bouncer over the circle, tough play. And Stewart gets to the bag in time. The All-American gets him out of the jam. And Ocasio survives that bases loaded situation. McGuire thought she might get a single. Stewart stops that. The Gators defense steps up. We're scoreless through one in Gainesville. Our class is hungry. Like we came in after a little bit of a rough finish and we were all kind of trying to 
build a name and kind of rebuild Florida softball, I think. I think we've talked a lot about how we had to earn the Gator head coming in, and, but I think it really comes back from um, just building up the program again, um, starting from a place that you know was really unknown, being the underdog. This class will go down as one of the, the best college softball classes of all time, and the word class, I think, is going to be the one that stands out to me is how much class they play with. The Gators senior class, they only know Oklahoma City, hoping to get back there, and Tim Walton, it's it's tough when you know you have to say goodbye to those seniors, but he, he's hoping it ends in Oklahoma City again. Exactly, and these seniors, like you said, they don't know what it's like not to get to the World Series. This is an important game, and there's some pressure just on them in that moment. And a lot of times, I think, when you have that, it almost becomes an expectation, Trey, where you almost think that that's where you're supposed to be, and you forget that it's a battle to get to that point. And Florida, really, their backs against the walls here, having to fight. Kaylee Kavistad, the designated player, power hitter, leading things off. And this is big, again, for Wilkinson to continue the momentum and keep them guessing. She's got them on their heels, at least through the first frame. And she does a good job mixing her pitches. And again, the movement of what Wilkinson does is the best part about her. If she can make that ball move enough that it moves away from the sweet spot of the barrel, Florida doesn't square up in these pitches. They don't drive the ball well. You're drawing more pop flies. You're drawing more ground balls. Yesterday, 12 in the air, 7 in the ground. And just being able to mix the pitches for Wilkinson kept Florida so off balance, they weren't able to adjust. And so far, Early in the game, of course, but so far, no adjustments yet. 3-1 hitters count here. And that's rip foul. This dad way out in front of that one. Sophomore from Lake City, Florida. Vista got a hold of this one, got up on this pitch. That was a better adjustment than we saw yesterday. She drives it, turns on it too far, and it goes foul. But good solid hit there getting on top of that up pitch. Payoff pitch popped up. The catcher, Brown, has room in front of the net. One away. Big moment, James Madison, LSU. Let's check in with Chris Cotter in the studio. Yeah, Trey Bottom, 7-2 out. Bases loaded. Jessica Morozik goes the other way and wins it for the Dukes. So they take game one, game two, noon tomorrow on ESPN. Meanwhile, over on ESPN, Utah and Florida State just underway. And they are scoreless. Trey, Jenny, back to you guys. Thank you, Chris. LSU <laughs> goes down in that matchup. You know, JMU continues to impress my pick. If I were filling out my bracket, it was LSU. So big shock there in uh, JMU. Man, they can play. A lot of people were excited about that matchup, seven against 10. As Alicia Ocasio tries to help her cause here. She has just 27 at bats, but when she's been a hitter, she's been productive. 12 to 27, you see the average. Yeah, she's done a good job needing to get more reps. It's something Coach Walton wanted to do is get her and get more reps. She wanted to do more for the team. So far, so good. Even yesterday, we saw her come in as a pinch hitter and draw a walk in a, a pressured situation. Didn't result in a run, but that set off that bottom of the seventh inning with a runner on base where Florida had an opportunity to drive her in. And hits it hard to right field. Sydney Emanuel at the track. She's got it. Two down. Another good at bat for Ocasio. Yeah, she just drives this pitch. A low pitch in the zone. It's underneath it, maybe just a little bit, doesn't have enough power for it to go over the fence. Emmanuel goes back and gets it. Again, you talk about quality at bats, and she drove that pitch. Now Janelle Wheaton, the Gators' first baseman. It's a Gators team that was sixth in the nation in on-base percentage. Their batting average number is not close to where Georgia's are at 314, but still pretty effective as an offense. And that's hit hard to center. Playable for Lazier. 
and a 1-2-3 inning as Wilkinson has set down the first six she's faced here in Gainesville. Bottom part of the order for the Bulldogs when we come back. Welcome back to Gainesville, Florida. As we look at our side of the bracket, winner of Florida, Georgia, advances to take on Florida State, Utah. The Utes and Seminoles currently on ESPNU. That's in Tallahassee. And look at the three Pac-12 schools at the bottom. Pac-12 and SEC well represented. And they continue to be the stronger conferences. You're seeing a lot putting up some fights. So LSU falling to JMU. You're going to see some battles at Arizona, Auburn. They're going to be a battle as well. Clint Myers, they'll uh, they'll have the bats swinging, I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely, they find a way. Clint Myers always seems to find a way. Seven, eight, and nine hitters for Georgia. Katie Brown, the catcher, to lead things off after they loaded the bases in the first inning against the Player of the Year candidate Alicia Ocasio. She is 22 and one. Had a couple wins in the regional. Struggled a little bit first inning, but she gets Brown to pop it up. Voss can't locate it. It drops and into second safely is Brown. It's the foul ball. It looked like for a moment it dropped into fair territory. Yeah, and talk about a lucky hop. The communication that the defense for Florida is not having right now, for the lack of it, has been amazing. Voss going for that just not going enough fuller comes off of the ball and Voss doesn't go after it no contact with the ball here clearly and, and it bounces a break ball. yep but something again so uncharacteristic of what we see from Florida and you know of course Trey we see dominant pitching and something that the defense maybe is used to a few more strikeouts here and there but they still need to play clean defense I mean in this point in the game your backs are against the wall and there's a drive by Katie Brown, and it's gone! And Georgia just finding a way to pick up where they left off yesterday. Katie Brown finding a pitch, driving it over the left field fence, putting her team ahead again in this game. And Georgia takes the lead. They get a second opportunity on the foul, and she delivers. Talk about lifting this pitch. She gets underneath it, but the power behind it, she just drives it. Lorenz goes back, not even a chance off the roof. And look at that energy, putting her team ahead. Huge hit for Brown. Talk about momentum in Georgia's favor right now. And, and we look back, how big was, was that defensive miscue between Voss and Fuller to not catch that? And next pitch, Brown hits it out of the park. They've had some miscues that have been costly, and that is just the fifth home run against Ocasio all season long. Nicasio has always been one that, that really comes in to shut them down. And, and Georgia, again, continuing that mantra, of, we're not afraid. We're not afraid that they're the number one overall seed. And, and we're seeing the offense continue to attack. And Ocasio doing a good job mixing pitches, but in a beautiful pitch there to get a huge strikeout. And that's what you'd expect with somebody to come back with a big strikeout after a run has been scored. That's her second. And for her, she just has to keep the team in the game at this point. Try to build that momentum back any way she can in the circle. Sam Lazier, the senior, four-year starter, tries to go opposite field with it, playing in Lorenz, and an easy play, two down. How do you shake that off if you're Ocasio now? The, you you should have had an out, and then Brown takes it out of the park. Yeah, well, you can't dwell on things. I mean, as a pitcher, your job is to keep them in the game, and you got to count on your defense to step up and back you up. And when they don't, you've got to come through big. Yeah, it was a bad pitch. Yeah, it was now. It's about moving on. Ocasio came back with a strikeout. That's what she needed to do to take charge of this defense 
And now they got to get back on offense. The good news for the Gators is there's a lot of ball game left. And so if you're going to give up a home run, it's better to do it in the first couple innings than later in those innings. Top of the order now, Sidney Emanuel, who has already singled in this one. We're only in the second, but are the Gators a little bit shell-shocked after game one and then the mistakes they've made defensively, this is the number one fielding team in the country. I definitely think you can see their defense in, by the way. This is what they need to do for Emmanuel to stay close to her, get her out quick with her speed. But you're definitely seeing a little bit of pressure from the Gators. Chopper Voss in time. She needed that for her confidence, and she delivers the throw in time. Damage done, though. A pop-up that looked like an out. Voss couldn't find it, and it gave the catcher, Brown, another opportunity, and she gives Georgia the lead with her third home run this season. The Dogs in front, 1-0. We're in Gator Country, Gainesville Super Regional, but Georgia trying to spring the surprise here after winning game 1-3-0. Up 1-0 here, top of the third against Tim Walton's bunch, and maybe pressure building a little bit for the two-time defending champs. Nicole DeWitt to lead things off for Florida and hits a lazy fly ball to center. Sam Lazier is there, one down. Between innings, Walton and the players. Well, and you have to know the time to motivate your players when you don't see them playing at the level they need to play. You get in their face. You tell them what's going on. You get them back refocused where they need to refocus. That's what you see Tim Walton doing here, getting their team back into that what they are their plan for success as he calls it of what they know saw the tournament numbers they're 56 and 6 this year and you can sometimes see it in the body language you're aware of that but you get that first run on the board and then knowing that wilkinson is really on cruise control right now makes it even more troubling and there's a grounder to third to Carlo, two down. And you're exactly right. I mean, you can read these teams like a book right now. You can see Georgia feeling confident. They're calm. They're consistent. Wilkinson is leading them in the circle. And then you go look at Florida, and you almost feel like they're all running in different directions. They're not on the same page. They don't know what's going on. And you can feel how tight they are. I mean, that energy that they're bringing is not what Tim Walton wants to see. Taylor Fuller, the ninth place hitter. Big cut at strike one. Part of that senior class from Trenton, Florida. Power hitter. She's been streaky. Wilkinson continually getting ahead of these Florida batters, and we're seeing them sit and take first pitch strikes, second pitch strikes. Maybe not as aggressive as they could be, but when they are aggressive, Trey, they're popping the ball up. So those are the adjustments they need to make. That is foul down the left field line. I mean, you're talking about the ninth inning that they have seen Wilkinson, and we have not, we have yet to see an adjustment that has been effective for Florida at this point. And you got to credit Wilkinson, of course, but man, we've seen Florida make much better adjustments. I thought you made a great point about Wilkinson. She's in that comfort zone, whatever that is. She's not a strikeout pitcher, but talk about that, the, the zone she's in right now. For her, what is that? You know what? For any pitcher, it's about getting ahead of the batters. If you can command by getting ahead of the batters, throwing a couple pitches in between, and then finishing the batters, you're in charge. And that's what Wilkinson has done. She kind of has those bookends, finishing the batter, getting ahead of the batter at the beginning. 0-2, way out in front that time, Fuller. And you, you hear the term play into contact. The fielders are, are set up perfectly, and the ball it just yeah. they're getting some routine plays. Everything has been executed, and I think if you're Wilkinson, you have to come into this game feeling confident about how your defense played yesterday. Pick up with that momentum and come into this game. That's exactly what they've done. Again, out in front is Fuller. And Wilkinson, pitch speed wise, her rise ball is a little bit slower than her moving pitches on the corners and a little bit faster than her changeup. So when you talk about three different speeds, Florida unable to adjust not only to the movement, but to the speed as well. And again, that high pitch, and 
she's not able to wait on it. She's been well out in front. It's a good thing for Fuller to battle that off, but at an 0-2 count, you almost have to expect that Wilkinson's going to give you some sort of junk, something out of that zone. Fall off anything close, but don't reach too high for that up pitch. And that one is bounced up there. Four time all SEC pick, second winningest pitcher in Georgia history. This is the eighth pitch of this at bat. Hammered foul. See Tim Walton just staying focused, focusing on his team, and you know, obviously wanting to see the, make better adjustments. Fuller being the nine in the lineup, turning it around to Lorenz at the top. Fuller giving a good quality at bat here, though. Two and two from a one stoplight town, 45 minutes away from Gainesville, Trenton, Florida. Trying to get on board here with two down. And a time out called as they'll meet in the circle. Yeah, long at bat, Wilkinson has him in her mind, based on the sequence that she's thrown, what she wants to throw. And that's something that if you're, Katie, uh, you're Brown, you've got to jump out there and kind of find out what she wants. If she's confident and she's flying high, you throw the pitch that Wilkinson wants to throw. Tenth pitch of this AB. Bounce toward third. DiCarlo on the short hop. Just in time. Nine up, nine down for Chelsea Wilkinson. Georgia still up one nothing. Emmanuel will lead things off for the dogs. Bottom of the third. Three defensive miscues for the Gators. Defensively, they've had some problems. Yeah, and then Fuller and Monroe here in this foul ball. They collide here. And then the one that really mattered, this pop fly between Fuller and Voss, both pulling off the ball. It drops, and then that sets up Katie Brown. The next pitch should have been an out. The next pitch ends up being a home run over the fence for Georgia to go ahead 1-0 in this game. And man, you can feel that Florida is just feeling that pressure every single pitch, every single moment, that maybe feeling that their backs are against the wall more so than they're used to. Top of the order. Second hitter, Courtney Emanuel, to lead things off. Just the one error charge to Voss on that play up the middle, but uh, the misplays have been costly as Courtney goes opposite field with this one and flies out to Lorenz, one down. Tonight on ESPN, the Eastern Conference Finals are back at the Air Canada Center in Toronto. Game six, LeBron and the Cavs on the brink of heading back to the finals. Coverage begins with NBA countdown at 7.30, charged by Dew. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Alicia Ocasio wins against Alabama State and UCF. Nine scoreless frames in that regional here in Gainesville. But already touched for a run, thanks to the Brown home run in the second against Georgia. Nicasio, typically the type of pitcher that gets stronger as the game goes on, had that kind of rough first inning, the bad pitch there in the second inning. But she is still getting ahead of batters and she's still battling well. DiCarlo hits it hard to short. Voss, nice play there from the freshman. Two down. And that's what you'd expect of Ocasio pitching is those ground balls. That's why she needs to rely on her defense. As a drop ball pitcher, when you throw that drop ball, most batters are going to ground out. You can see it here. Voss making a good play here. And that's what you need if you're Ocasio is to be able to rely on your defense to get routine outs. Now Tina Yosefa. And fly it out to center her first time. And I think the key for Georgia here is not to let your foot off that gas pedal. Just because that run scored doesn't mean that's the end. We didn't. We saw that yesterday. They came out. They got some insurance runs. They really need to keep pushing here. Push to get some extra insurance runs. 
Yosefa right back to the circle. An easy play for Ocasio in a 1-2-3 inning. Just what the doctor ordered. Georgia, 1-0. A seven-pitch inning. Coming up, we'll talk to Lou Harris-Champer, the coach of the dogs with her team in front. 1-0 Georgia, top of the fourth. Game two of the Super Regionals. Joined by Georgia head coach Lou Harris-Champer. Coach, it looks like a carbon copy of that first game. You, your aggressiveness hitting, talk about that right out of the gate. Well, we know that she's a very good pitcher and that she throws strikes, and we know that we need to be ready for the ball to be in our window. Coach, talk about putting Wilkinson back in today. Talk about your decision to go with her. You know, she had a great game last night. Uh, you know, she seems, she seems to have a lot of poise and knowing exactly what she's wanting to do right now, and I trust her with the ball. Thanks, Thank you. Coach. Appreciate Thanks. the time. Thank it you. This reminds us of what we saw yesterday. You and I were chatting during the break. <laughs> Wilkinson pitching maybe even sharper than she did in game one. Yeah, she continually is getting better today here. Yeah, her pitches, she's bringing it into the zone more. Yesterday, I felt like her first time through the Florida lineup, she was too careful, missing too much. Today, she's just coming in, attacking these Florida batters. 28 of her 39 pitches have gone for strikes as the Reds hammers it off of Yosefa, and she's aboard. That was peppered. Let's check in with Chris Cotter in the studio. The pitchers duel Utah and Florida State, and Sydney Broderick helping her pitchers cause right here by throwing out Delilah Pacheco, all scoreless over on ESPNU. Trey? All right, nothing on the board there in the third. And the Gators fans making some noise now. Top of the order, here's Kelsey Stewart with Lorenzo Borg. That might have been the hardest hit ball we've seen. <laughs> Exactly, and talk about the ability to bring a little bit of momentum if you're Lorenz back to your dugout. A huge hit. Stewart's going to lay the bunt down. Third baseman charging to Carlo. Good play to get Stewart, but she moves Lorenz up to second base. And well executed if you're Stewart. At this point for Florida, you've got to find a way to manufacture a run. You were shut out yesterday. You have nothing on the board right now. You want to make something happen. Get Lorenz into scoring position with the heart of your lineup up. Florida 0 for 4 in this Super Regional with runners in scoring position. We talked about this too with Florida in the past is once they get through that first time through the lineup, they typically make adjustments. Yesterday they didn't. They also, we also talked about the 7, 8, 9 coming through big. They didn't yesterday either. So if they are able to make adjustments here, the second time through the lineup, which Lorenz shows has happened so far, then Florida can come back and work to manufacture runs. Wilkinson was so calm, cool, and collected with runners on in game one. Eight left on base as she shut out the Gators. First situation here with a runner on in the fourth inning in game two. Bouncer to third. DiCarlo looks at the runner who will move over, but the play made five to three on the putout. And now Loren standing at third base. Gators offense searching, trying to find a spark. And they have Kaylee Kavistad with an RBI opportunity. This is the best situation for Florida to be in work to manufacture that one run. If you're Wilkinson, you can't feel the pressure with Lorenz there on third base. And sometimes when you get in your rhythm and you're getting your zone and you're shutting people down, you start losing that a little bit when you get runners on base. And so Wilkinson not showing that here, getting ahead. First pitch strike again on Kavistad. And she has to stay consistent. One and one, Kavistad fouled out to the catcher in the second inning. She's been big with runners on. One and two. And a beautiful off speed. And that's something that we haven't seen a ton from Wilkinson. She mixes it in when needed. But a beautiful called strike there to freeze Kavistad and get ahead and stay ahead in the count. 
The senior from Taylorsville, North Carolina, trying to get out of the inning. Fouled off. It's been a struggle in the postseason for Kaylee. Foul over the pen, third base side. First team All SEC hitter, Tim Walton, trying to draw even here, get some momentum back. They haven't had it at all in the Super Regional. You're absolutely right. This is about the most momentum we felt offensively for Florida at all just by getting Lorenz to third base with two outs. This is not Florida. And so that's always an amazing thing to see what Wilkinson in, in the Georgia defense has been able to do and, you know, a powerhouse offense that Florida is able to hold him off a little bit. Fouled off. Good battle going on here between the sophomore and the senior. And Kavistad really timed that pitch well. She was all over it, but the spin of it, and that's the thing that we talked about, how, why Wilkinson is so good. She spins the ball well enough that even when you time it, and even when you swing where the ball is, it's not there by the time your barrel gets to it. Eighth pitch of this at bat. It's fouled off. Just had a hard worker. Her sister was a softball commit to South Alabama. Power hitter. Pops it up to Carlo and foul ground. And Wilkinson does it again. She gets out of the jam. Still, 1-0 Georgia. Keeping the Florida bats at bay. Gators get a runner to third. Wilkinson enjoying the lead. Georgia leads Florida 1-0 Super Regionals here. Game two, bottom of the fourth. Joined by Gators head coach Tim Walton. Coach, I know you had a conference between innings with your gang. What are you telling them here uh, in this one-run game? Well, we're just still trying to do a good job of, uh, of staying through the middle of the field a little bit more. You know, I think we just keep getting disconnected with that middle speed trying to do a good job actually you know trying to believe it or not trying to chop down on the ball wouldn't show that by the number of fly balls we've hit so far but definitely trying to, to hit the ball down a little bit more we're, we're, we're just losing our uh, losing our bat angle and she's doing a good job changing speeds coach talk about a couple of the defensive miscues a little uncharacteristic of your defense but what kind of uh, communication errors are they having um well I, obviously we had two people calling for one ball we had uh, another person call for a ball and get called off yeah, right now we've given them four extra outs, so you know that's not something that we're typical of. Uh, but uh, you know, again, I, I don't think uh, this game today in this situation is a typical situation. So I think we're, uh, as I told our team a little bit, you know, we've we've worked so hard in the in the morning conditioning to get us to this point, and you know, don't get caught up in the, the the fans and the cheers and all the other stuff. Just do your job, play softball, have fun, enjoy each other, and uh, you know, just provide the leadership that we need. I think we're just trying a little bit too hard. Coach, thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. It's, uh, you know, something that uh, he has a lot of confidence in this gang. He's got the best pitcher in the country, arguably, in the circle. But somewhere along the line, the offense needs to kick it into gear. You're absolutely right. But I think I think he hit the nail on the head. They're trying way too hard. And he's right. This is not a normal situation. You're back against the wall. The fans are louder. The energy is greater. George is feeling good. And they're bringing their A game. And Florida just kind of struggling to find their momentum in their the way they play Florida softball. Casio making the mistake on the home run ball to Brown. Now Hugo hits it deep to left center, and that's going to fall short of the wall near the track. Merritt loves it. One down. Another hard hit ball. The Georgia Bats have been active here. How about the Gators last two years and a look at this year? They dominated in the regional. Yeah, I mean, you're talking a three and one record, 20 and two. Last year, they have always dominated it. Maeve McGuire, first pitch swinging. 
Right fielder DeWitt is there near the line. And a couple fly ball outs. And two big outs here for the Gators. And Ocasio really starting to settle in. And that's more Florida defense relying on miss hits and your defense making the plays. There's a little bit better communication. You're seeing the team settle down a little bit. You can feel that energy dying down a little bit. Now Katie Brown, the senior from Zachary, Louisiana, she has provided the offense, second inning. And that pitch up in that zone, Brown finds a way to lift it over the fence. If you're a Kasu, you want to be careful what you throw to her at this point. She's definitely feeling that confidence. Brown, a solid year with, with the bat when she's squared away. You hear that phrase again, and she was clearly squared away in the home run ball. Hard worker. It's foul back. And that terminology, squaring away, just hitting that sweet spot. And, you know, that's why it's so hard when you're a pitcher is you want to move the ball enough that they're not capable of squaring away because most hitters, when they get to this point in postseason, if they square away on a ball, they're going to drive it somewhere hard. And a swing and a miss in a 1-2-3 inning, and Ocasio starting to find a groove now. That's her third strikeout, a seven-pitch inning. Ocasio will lead things off for the Gators, who trail by one run. Currently on ESPNW.com, analysis from Graham Hayes, player and highlight of the day, and more. Women's College World Series trivia with Jess Mendoza and highlight scores, schedule, and more. An exciting time of the year, Super Regionals, Oklahoma City right around the corner. And will it be Florida again back in Oklahoma City, or will Georgia pull off the stunner here and win this Super Regional 2-0? Wilkinson working to Ocasio as we open up the fifth inning. And I think this is where you want to be if you're Florida with Acasio leading this inning off. She's just had such good at bats, whether it's being able to draw a walk or really drive a ball somewhere. When it comes to consistency, she's the one that I feel like my gut says, I want her up to bat when we're trying to make something happen. First or second pitch strikes. 13 of 14 for Wilkinson. It's a pretty good sign as she got out of a jam in that fourth inning. And you think about the single that was given to Lorenz. It was a hard hit ball at Yosefa, but it was a ball that was, was ruled a hit, but it could have been an out. It was hit right at her. Yeah, if Yosefa fielded that cleanly. You're absolutely right. You would have seen no hits on the board still, and Wilkinson taking command still. So we haven't seen a lot of adjustments. Funny, Coach Walton says they're really trying to chop down at the ball, but yet they keep popping up at it. And that's in large part credit due to the spin of Wilkinson's rise ball that even when you try to go up for that pitch and chop down at it, you're still missing the ball enough that you end up popping up instead. Second time she's faced a full count. Hammered into right, base hit. And you could almost feel that Acasio is going to do it, just patiently waiting for the right pitch to find a way to drive somewhere into the outfield. This pitch up in the zone, Acasio getting on top, doing what Coach Walton says, chop it, get on top of that ball, and really try to drive it down. And that's what she does, finds a hole into that outfield and gets herself on base. And the key for Florida here is execute, get Acasio around those bases. Janelle Wheaton. Does not square to bunt, takes the pitch inside. Swing away. And you've got Nicole DeWitt on deck. She has really been swinging it well at a big regional. Yeah, DeWitt's come through 
multiple times for the Gators, which makes me interested of why you wouldn't bunt in this situation. Foul back. Try to get Acasio to second base and have somebody like DeWitt really execute. But it's it's the trust that you have in your players of your coach Walton. You know what their tendencies are. Maybe Wheaton, not a strong bunter, but much better at driving the ball on the ground. Whatever it may be, this is where Coach Walton feels is, is the smartest decision for him right now. She's been reliable and consistent with the bat this year. Absolutely. Two and two. And here comes Hugo with a little verbal instruction, very active out there at second base. Hit off the end of the bat. Only play at first, so that's as good as a sacrifice. One way to get it done, one down. And you really, I mean, you're absolutely right. As good as a sacrifice, well executed to put the ball in play on the ground and let Ocasio transfer, get all the way to second base. And let DeWitt do her thing in the box. DeWitt, a 460 hitter since mid-April. And had three hits in the regional and an opportunity to tie it up here. Game one struggles with the bat. Same story, game two, same pitcher, Chelsea Wilkinson, the four-time All-SEC pick, the senior. Yeah, and the key really is that runners in scoring position that shows that Wilkinson gets stronger with runners on. And how about that eight left on base yesterday? Just one today, because they haven't had as many on, but the one today got all the way to third base, and they still weren't able to come through with that timely hit. Low to DeWitt. Garden Grove, California. Gap power, she just needs a single here though to tie it up. Yeah. And she drives it to center. Acasio had to hold for a moment and Walton's gonna keep her put at third. Strong throw from Lazier, the center fielder. They held her between second and third on the contact. Runners on the corners. And DeWitt coming through again, big here. Casio having to hold up. See if Hugo might get to that, doesn't. Lazier then gets it in quick, playing a little shallow. Does not allow Casio to score from second, but big first and third situation here for the Gators. Fans are starting to get fired up. You can feel it in here. This momentum starting to shift into the Gators' favor. First time they've had a chance to be vocal. You know, that was the case on that hit. Because it was so hard hit, it ended up costing Florida. You know, that's a blooper. That's uh, one where Ocasio scores easily. Exactly. A line drive that Lazier's able to charge in and get in front of and get it in quickly. So now the senior leader, Aubrey Monroe, who has been so key in key situations throughout her career, chance to tie it up here with a single. Good cut. Second team all SEC, passion in the details. You see the numbers there, but you've got to look past the numbers. Talk about the importance of uh, this player in her career. She's one of those players that's just selfless, that does what she needs to for the team. It doesn't have to be about the glory. It doesn't have to be about the big hit. It's about coming through when you need to and executing when you need to, doing those things. And, and, and she's certainly one leader-wise worth having in the field and at the plate. And that's hit Monroe, and the bases are loaded. You can see the energy she brings, just giving a fist pump to her, uh, her dugout. Loading the bases for the Gators, the most offensive production we've seen out of them. You can see the look on Wilkinson's face. This pitch up and just gets too far in. Monroe turning on it. It hits that right elbow. 
finds a way to get on base, and that's what you do. Whatever it takes for the team, find a way to get on base. That's what Monroe did there. Hit by an 0-2 pitch, base is loaded. Go ahead, running out at second. Here's Taylor Fuller. In a situation here, Trey, where we expect the bottom of the lineup to show up. So far with De DeWitt, Monroe, they found a way to execute with Acasio leading it off. Fuller here in that nine spot, really needing to come through big in the bottom of the lineup. Out in front of that one. The infield playing in here with one out. Can Wilkinson work out of another jam in the Super Regional? And that is bounce foul. And this is something when you talk about making adjustments and Coach Walton wanting his team to swing down on the ball. And a situation where you need to get that ball in the ground. A pop fly is not, unless it's deep enough, a pop fly is not going to score your runner. So you either need to drive it into that outfield or find a way to chop at it and drive it on the ground. And that hits the batter fuller, and that'll bring in a tying run. Ocasio touches home plate. It's one to one. And Wilkinson, who has been so strong and so consistent in her pitches, misses this pitch on the inside part of the plate. Again, Fuller trying to get out of the way, cannot. It's too far into the box. Ends up bringing the run home. Tie ball game. Now Amanda Lorenz. Top of the order, first pitch swinging, backhanded by Yosefa. She can't make the play. She does make the play. Run will score to make it two to one. And there was some confusion over there with Hugo, but the Gators have the lead now. And this is where Georgia needs to get stronger. Their defense needs to remain strong. Almost a miscommunication there with Yosefa, thinking Hugo was going to take the base at first. You can see this ball hit, Yosefa having to come off the bag a little more than she wanted to. And then at that point, with the speed of Lorenz, she had to decide. DeWitt easily makes it home, no play at home. And Florida finally showing that they're making their adjustments and starting to work together better as a team. Now Kelsey Stewart with runners at second and third. Couple hit batters. And a ground out. Bouncer to short. And Summerlin in time to end the inning. Two hit batters on two strike counts. Two runs come across. Florida in front 2 1. Brownsville, Florida, the site. Game two of the Super Regionals. Florida in front for the first time in the Super Regional up 2 1 as we look at our bracket. Florida State, Utah, and Tallahassee. That's currently on ESPNU. Winner there meets the winner here. And bottom part of the bracket, the Ducks and the Bruins in a Pac-12 matchup. Very intriguing on ESPN. Thursday at noon Eastern time, the Women's College World Series. And Alicia Ocasio hoping she can get her team back there. Chance at the three-peat. Has the lead to work with now as Lacey Summerlin will lead things off. Taylor Schwartz now at first base, replacing Janelle Wheaton. Nicasio typically gets stronger as the game goes on, as we talked about, which means that with this lead, this should be a comfortable spot for her. She has really settled down after giving up the home run to Brown. Ocasio has needed only 22 pitches to record the last nine outs. So she has calm things down here. And now she's working the bottom part of the order. Popped up foul ground. Schwartz giving a look. Donna Schwartz has got it. She went into the Gators dugout and snared it. Talk about coming into the game and making an impact. Schwartz going all out on this. This ball completely in the Florida dugout, she reaches up just about as far as she can and grabs it, pulls it back into that field. You see the smile on her face. 
Again, you can start feeling it, Trey. This momentum is starting to shift in the Gators' favor. The Sports Center top 10 nominee, Taylor Schwartz, flashing the leather over there. Now Sam Lazier. Momentum now on the Gator side. They do it with the offense, they do it with the defense, and Ocasio really cruising now. She has found her groove. Yeah, getting ahead of the batters. We're seeing things, the tendencies that Wilkinson had, now we're seeing Ocasio do. Slapped at, Voss is there, two down. Let's go to the studio and Chris Cotter. All right, Trey, they're manufacturing runs down in Tallahassee as well. Haley Harrod is gonna beat out this chopper, short hop to short stop. Second run comes across for the Knowles. They lead two to nothing over Utah over on ESPNU. Thank you, Chris. Just down the road in Tallahassee. A lot of people were anticipating maybe a Florida, Florida State matchup as they move on to the World Series, but this uh, very much in doubt after Georgia took game one. Exactly, and it just gets tougher from here on out. You know, you can sit there and you can fill out a bracket and hope that one team wins it here or there. It's just a battle. No matter what, the teams that are left are all outstanding teams. Sydney Emanuel lays off of that pitch up in the zone. Single to left her first time up. Nicasio really setting the rhythm better this game, this inning, excuse me against these Georgia batters, forcing them to swing at the pitches that she wants to throw. Georgia. Boss on a high hop. And a one, two, three inning. Gators getting the pitching from Ocasio and the defense from Taylor Schwartz into the Florida dugout to record a big out. to back titles. Can the Gators get back there and three-peat? They've already lost game one of the Super Regional 3-0. They have the lead here in game two. Trying to add some insurance and Merritt hammers that one down the left field line and foul. Merritt jumping aggressively on Wilkinson, something we haven't seen them do and we've really kind of seen a switch of roles here in the offense. Georgia, their four of their last six batters have been popped out on Ocasio. We've seen Florida do that virtually all of last game and most of this game. Now, Florida's last six batters had five ground outs. And when we talk about making adjustments, you talk about Tim Walton wanting them to drive the ball on the ground. As soon as they started doing that, the out distribution changed, but they had more offensive production and they were able to score more runs. Wilkinson working ahead 0-2 here. And a one hopper Hugo from her knees, not in time. She was kind of jammed, but it was hitting a spot where her speed got her down the line and on board. One thing we know is that Hugo is going to cover a lot of ground. She's going to catch up to this, but look at the speed of Merritt. Not a chance. Again, Hugo really covering some ground, a quick release. When you got speed like Merritt has, it's a hard play to make. And again, making life uncomfortable for Wilkinson, the leadoff hitter aboard, and here's Kavistat. And this should be the key for Florida. Work to get the leadoff batter in every inning on base and create havoc on the base path and really try to get Wilkinson out of her element. Again, part of her game plan is to set her own tone. It's fouled out of play. You can almost feel a little bit like her own tone is now being dictated by what Florida's tone is. She's losing what she's capable of doing and starting to kind of play into Florida's offensive tone. Vistad, top 20 in the country in RBIs this season. Lays off of that one. for that one and fouls it off. 
And this is where Wilkinson maybe needs to introduce it a little bit more is that off speed. Kvistat out on that front foot, lunges for it. Look at the difference in pitch speed on that. Kvistat so far out that she fouls it off. When you mix that with the hard stuff and the up pitch, that's when Wilkinson stays tough. Yeah. Two and two. Remember, Chelsea pitched a complete game three hitter in game one yesterday, a Georgia 3-0 victory. Over 100 pitches, she's at 85 here. But this is a comfort zone for her. She's done that four times this year, back-to-back -back games, as that one's pulled foul. And if you can keep this a one-run game, we know about Georgia's bats. They're one of the top hitting teams in the country. You give, yourself, <laughs> you give yourself a chance, a great home run hitting team as well. Exactly, you know, it's a seven inning ball game. There's, there's still, to me, a lot of ball game left. You have such a good offense. As long as you're within one run, anything can happen. Give this dad way out in front. But the first key here is for the defense, for Georgia's defense, to quiet the Florida offense. And I almost feel like they're letting them in a little too much, allowing that leadoff runner on. Merritt to get on base with no outs. Having a good at bat, a good quality at bat that Kvistad is having right now. Those are things that you really want to limit and really take charge defensively. Laced foul. Another good at bat for Kvistad. She will make you work. Sprays it to all fields. On base percentage. of uh, 508 this season. She had a nine pitch at bat, her last at bat. And she hits it hard to short. Summerlin to Hugo for one on to first. Double play, they get it, six to four to three. And the infield defense from Georgia has been great all super regional. And that's exactly what they needed to quiet the Florida offense this a double play, but look at Hugo. She's falling backwards, still makes an on-target throw, and still makes it on time to get Kavistad out and double up the Florida batters. Huge defensive play there. A little bit of momentum back in Georgia's favor. Now Ocasio, is there a better athlete than Hugo? There's some great athletes, <laughs> but just her, her entire arsenal, what she brings to the table, you she know, can do anything out there. I feel like there is always one on every team that is like a Hugo, that brings you that energy, that passion, that loves playing ball and she definitely has that for her team I mean look at it cannot stop talking fired up I love it we had a couple highlight real plays yesterday part of the twin killing and there's a fly ball by Ocasio to right field and Emmanuel's there and that'll end the inning. So a single, but no damage done. Still a one-run game. Emmanuel, DiCarlo, Yosefa coming up. The heart of the order for the Dogs, trailing 2-1 to one here in Gainesville. Back in Gainesville, Florida, a 2-1 Florida lead over Georgia, bottom half of the sixth inning. The Dogs struck first with a run in the second, but two in the fifth for Florida, and look at what Ocasio has done since giving up the Brown home run. She's retired 12 straight batters on just 32 pitches. She gets stronger as the game goes on. Quite honestly, she is extremely tough when she pitches with the lead as well. Courtney Emanuel has struck out and flied out. Dangerous if she can get on the base pass. She has 32 stolen bases. in 33 attempts. And you'd really like to set up your big hitters, DiCarlo and Yosefa and Hugo follow her. Yeah, you're getting later in the innings here. This is exactly where you want to be if you're Georgia. Courtney Emanuel getting on base with DiCarlo, Yosefa, Hugo, and then here comes McGuire who's come through so many times for you in this super. You want to be able to get those batters on in, uh, in front of her. Courtney lays off of that one. Second team, all region pick in Athens. There's Hugo, vocal in the field and in the dugout. <laughs> well, she knows how to stop. When she's in a ball game, she brings that energy everywhere she goes. That is passion right there. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Grounder to short. Voss throws, and it's close. Got her by about half a step. And the throw almost off Voss, having to force that a little bit quicker than expected because Emmanuel going so fast. After a huge game six between the Cavs and Raptors, stick around for Sports Center at night with Bucci and Levy. Live from Toronto, a complete breakdown of the game. Major League Baseball highlights, French Open highlights, the rest of the day in sports. Sports Center at night tonight. And maybe the Schwartz play will get a look at that, right? Sports Center top 10 nominee. I say that thing ready to serve it up as that was one of the best plays we've seen in Gainesville through the regionals and the Super Regional. Well, how about Schwartz making that look easy, too? <laughs> yeah, just a net. routine play, right? <laughs> right, that net gives a little bit, so you're jumping into something that's not sturdy. Still trying to keep an eye on the ball. Taylor, a senior from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And now Monroe wants to talk with Ocasio. Katie Seashull, Presley Stadium. This is game two of the Super Regionals alongside the Michigan star pitcher, Jenny Ritter. I'm Trey Bender. Florida with their backs to the wall after dropping game one, three nothing to Georgia, leading here in game two in this best of three. And if we do have a game three, it's on ESPNU, eight Eastern time. The Gators have the luxury of having three aces. They could go with Kelly Barnhill, the freshman, if need be in that game three. And I think that's something you do have to ask yourself from your pitching. You're getting here later in the innings. You, at this point, you almost have to think sort of ahead into game three of what you want to do with that staff. DiCarlo pops it up. Fuller calling for it. And the third baseman makes the play in foul ground. No problems with this pop up. Yeah, you talked about defensive issues that they had earlier. This one, not an issue. Fuller calling everybody off, communicating. And again, you talk about Florida kind of changing the way they were. The first couple innings, not the same team they were this, the last couple innings. Just starting to calm down a little bit, get in their own element. Good cut from Tino Yosefa. The Gators had a couple miscues on pop-ups early in the game. They've settled down behind great pitching from Ocasio and good fielding as well. But you can't make a mistake here. Yosefa, the national leader in home runs and RBIs. Right back to the circle. Nice play defensively for Ocasio in another 1-2-3 inning. Still 2-1 Gators. Seventh inning coming up. It'll be Schwartz, the six, seven, and eight hitters. Ocasio looking for a big win. Now time for the pick you up moment of the game brought to you by Enterprise. Defense struggled and then offense came alive for the Gators. Versus Ocasio, then DeWitt driving it, and then two hit by pitches, Monroe and Fuller. Fuller getting that run in, and then Lorenz rounds out. Kind of a defensive miscue where there's only one play at first base. Scores DeWitt to put Florida ahead two to one. And they're hoping that's enough. The one run advantage for Ocasio as you see where we stand. We move into the seventh inning. Gators about hit the dogs four to three, and it'll be Schwartz leading things off in the sixth spot in the order for Florida against Wilkinson. Already made that highlight play defensively. Now trying to help her team with her bat. Streaky hitter. Her brother, JJ, sophomore catcher at Florida. Her dad played Major League Baseball, Jeff Schwartz. Good rip at that one. And you're continually seeing the Florida batters make the adjustment that they need to. That one typically fouled off and pop fouled. That one more driven in a line drive now. Schwartz making the adjustment to get more on top of that ball. 
And I think that's been the story here the last couple innings is Florida finally making adjustments where they need to make adjustments and find a way to push a couple runs across. A couple of miscues again from Wilkinson, those two hit by pitches that, that hurt. Hit off the end of the bat. Summerlin, tough play. Just in time. The groans from the Gators fans, one down. You know, sometimes those hits that come off the end of the bat, they just don't come off that hard. Summerlin playing deep, has to release quick, does. Whew, close play. You see the ball there, maybe just by an inch that step landing. Now Nicole DeWitt is one for two. The single in the fifth. Good corner on that pitch. DeWitt doing a good job laying off something close to that zone. And now ahead in the count. Looking for a green light here with a good pitch. Popped up, foul ground to Carlo. Runs out of real estate into the seats. About to hit the century mark on the pitch count here. 108 yesterday for Wilkinson. And you'd mentioned that maybe game three, not as a starter, but she has, she's uh, been a workhorse throughout yeah. her th the season for this team. I mean, she's a senior too. So it's one of those things if you do force game three. Gloves that one and throws out DeWitt two down. If you force that game through, you have to look and say, okay, work through the rest of the staff in Georgia. Know that you have Wilkinson to back you up to come in and take charge. And throwing a four hitter this game. Still doing a good job keeping Florida batters off balance. Just that one tough inning. The flip side for Florida. You go with Fresh, you go with Barnhill. That's the question. Uh, you could go back to Gorley who struggled in game one, that's still an option. She gave up a season high, three earned runs and seven hits. Florida needs to take care of business here first. And we look ahead to the bottom half of the seventh for Georgia. They've got some big hitters coming up. Yeah, Georgia's definitely at a spot starting off with Alex Hugo next up to bat, but really defensively here, Came through with two big outs. They've got to get one more here and get back onto offense fast. And we've talked a lot about Florida making adjustments. First time through that order, 0 for 9. Since then, 3 for 13. Two runs have scored in those three hits. Opposite field, base hit. He's aboard with two down. And Monroe really driving that pitch. Florida, again, continually making their adjustments. Nothing really hurt here for Wilkinson giving this up with two outs, but you have to ask yourself, is Florida really starting to make enough adjustments that they can put a few hits together? Really squaring up on the pitches a little bit better than they have for most of last game and this one. Pinch runner for the Gators. They'll bring in Lily Mann, a freshman from St. Cloud, Florida. They'll give him a little more speed out there. And Taylor Fuller, who was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded last time up, stands in against Wilkinson. And Florida now five for 14 since that first time through the lineup. in front of that one. Yeah. 
Gators trying to force a decisive game three here in the Super Regionals. Following this one, off speed, strike call. Wilkinson's off speed has continued to do well for her freezing these Florida batters. It's one of those things, if you're a Florida batter, you want to sit on that pitch and wait for it, or you just want to focus on the hard stuff and let that one go by when you see it. It looks like the game plan for Florida is to let that one go by. Hit off the end of the bat, a liner into the glove of DeCarlo to end the inning. So we head to the bottom of the seventh. Georgia, a chance, down a run, and the big hitter's coming up. Hugo, the senior leader, McGuire, who's been red hot, and Katie Brown, who has a home run already in game two. They're coming up. We're in Gainesville, Florida, game two of the Super Regionals. Florida leading Georgia 2-1 bottom of the seventh, trying to even this at a game apiece. Let's take a look at today's Capital One player of the game, and it's Alicia Ocasio. Six innings, she made one big mistake. You go back to the second, gave up a home run ball to Katie Brown. You know, this after a defensive miscue, not even a bad pitch. Katie Brown just tags it out. But you're right, just one bad pitch, and since then has been so strong. And that's what you expect out of Ocasio. That's what you expect out of the strength. And oh, by the way, Katie Brown is due up this inning. And they are standing here at Presley Stadium, the Gators fans cheering on the All-American, the Player of the Year finalist. And it's going to be Alex Hugo to lead things off. Inside, she almost hit her with the pitch. <laughs> How did she get out of the way of that pitch? <laughs> Completely inside. Hugo quick to get out of the way. You can tell she wants the bat in her hand. She wants to do something and create something offensively by getting a big hit. Her single was to left field in the first inning. Yeah. Senior from Olathe, Kansas. Two-time All-American. Leader in so many ways. Fouls out that pitch. Really, Georgia here in these late innings could take a note from Coach Tim Walton's book. Chop down at that up pitch. They're typically popping up here in these later innings. If they can work to chop down at those pitches and really drive the ball instead of get underneath it, good things can happen for the offense here. One, two, fly ball, shallow center. Stewart goes out, called yeah. off by Merritt, who makes the play. One down. And much better communication. You saw Stewart making a big call off there. As soon as she hears Merritt, she gets out of the way. Much better communication than what we saw earlier. And you can see it here, Stewart making the call on the infield. And then as soon as she hears Merritt, she backs up, gets out of the way, and lets Merritt take it. Captain of that outfield with a good play with the sun out there in the outfield. Yep, and you always let Merritt take it in that outfield. Here's Maeve McGuire. Hugo's a big out. She uh, is big in clutch situations, but McGuire had three hits in game one. Crave the Mave, Mave McGuire. <laughs> Bouncer up the middle. Voss on the move. High throw, safe. Cold Schwartz off the bag. What a huge play, McGuire with some speed there. High chopper up the middle. We've seen her drive the ball back up the middle a lot this series. Same thing here, the high enough bounce that allows her to catch some ground. Voss does a good job releasing the ball high, though. Ah! You have Schwartz jumping up for the ball. And that foot leaving the bag just barely. Did she get the toe down at the end? That was a close call. Not conclusive, and we have a runner aboard now with one down, and here is Katie Brown. Yeah! Who else would you want up with a runner on base but Katie Brown, who's seen the ball well, driving the ball well. He's bringing that confidence to the plate represents the winning run for Georgia right here in the seventh. Yeah. Big cut. 
and huge for Acasio in this situation. When Georgia kind of gets their foot in the door with a little momentum with McGuire getting on base, comes back against Katie Brown, gets ahead of her with two strikes, an 0-2 count. Liner to short, Voss with the play, and back to the bag is McGuire, two away. A good drive there by Brown, just right to Voss. Ocasio finding herself one out away from a win here. Trying to force a game three. A little bit of drama though here. You retire the big hitters in Hugo, McGuire, and Brown. Now you get Summerlin, who is a 245 hitter on the season. And it looks like they're going to have a pinch hitter come in. And this is an interesting move for the dogs. First we've seen of Kaylee Puailoa, a senior from Buena Park, California. Gap but, to gap hitter, the Moose. But makes sense because Puailoa has come through big and pinch hit situations. And there's no bigger situation than this one right here. To come through big with a hit, smart decision and good opportunity to use Puailoa here. Moose has five home runs. She's driven in 47. And the Gators are a strike away from forcing a game three. The teammates don't know her anything other than Moose. Nickname that brought to her into the program. Just a solid hitter. Oh, 2 hit hard to center. Merritt to the warning track, it's gone! Georgia is headed to the World Series in Oklahoma City! huge in a pressured situation and puts her team into the Women's College World Series. Look at the excitement. Alex Hugo in tears. Defeating the number one overall seed in the country. Kaylee Puailoa, senior from Buena Park, California, with a monster home run to center field. The game winner against Ocasio. And this pitch, not a bad pitch, but a little bit up in that zone. Puailoa just tags it. Good extension of the hands, just looking to make good, solid contact. And drives it straight over the fence. Credit to Merritt for trying to go back as hard as she could, but no chance on this ball. This is to deep center field. That reaction, Puailoa putting her team into the World Series. 64 home runs for the Bulldogs this season. None bigger than the pinch hit home run to send them to Oklahoma City. A dramatic victory for Georgia. First meeting this season between SEC rivals and again, the number one seed goes down, but the two-time defending champs, Florida, their season comes to a shocking end here. No kidding. You're talking about seniors that have gone to the World Series every year. You're talking about a team that was so confident, so strong all year long. 
that it's proof that anybody can win here in the postseason, that when you come to play your A game, you've got to bring it every single time. Two unfortunate pitches from Ocasio driving two over the fence for Georgia, but Georgia coming through with timely hitting, a good coaching move to put Puailoa in. Just an all around good series of game, a good matchup, which you expected out of a rivalry. And just pure disappointment from the Florida Gators looking to three-peat and proof of how hard it is, Trey, to three-peat. You've got to get to the World Series. It's something Tim Walton has said over and over again. It's not about three-peating. It's about getting yourself to the World Series. You don't even have that chance unless you get there. And proof here that this was an opportunity for them to do it, that they didn't come through. Georgia Bulldogs have had tremendous success getting to the postseason. Ninth Super Regional, but they are going to the World Series after knocking off Florida, ousting the two-time defending champs. They'll await the winner of Florida State, Utah, currently on ESPNU. And maybe Georgia overlooked here, as you look at the bottom of the bracket, the Pac-12 heavy with, with Auburn as well. The dogs, from a hitting perspective, not just the power, but the timely hitting. And then you get Wilkinson pitching the way she does. They're very, very difficult to beat. Exactly. And I think good offense can always prevail. For Georgia, they had good pitching and they had good offense. And their defense stepped up big time. Something that they had struggled with partially in the regular season. Jumped into postseason. Jumped into this series against Florida knowing they had to bring it all. Just solid defense behind Wilkinson. Wilkinson throwing two gems of a game. Just doing an outstanding job in all three facets of the game. And the tip of the cap to Coach Champer as we're joined by the hero now, Kaylee Puailoa, the senior from Buena Park, <laughs> California. What was going through your mind on that at bat? You know what, just going out there and doing what I've been doing all week, all year, just really. <laughs> I think the mic's <laughs> wet. Oh, we can still hear you. Okay. Walk you know, us through that pitch. Tell us what you saw. You know what? I was really just listening to all the lefties that had already gone up. They said she was throwing a rise ball, but it was really flat. So just stay on top of it and, you know, just do what we've been doing all week. We've been preparing for her, hitting the drop ball machine and the rise ball machine. So just we've been preparing for her for a long time. So really just going out there and just taking my hacks, really, so it felt good. Kaylee, what is it about this team and swinging the bats? You are maybe as good as anybody, but you're clutch hitting of late. Why Why in clutch situations have you been so big late season? You know what, we work on it at practice all the time, situations, and we really work off Nick and Rachel just letting the ball get deep and knowing where to hit and just timely hitting is what we're practicing a lot. Looking ahead into the World Series, how big is that moment to get your team there? And really, how excited are you? <laughs> you know what? It's been a long time since we felt like this since the SEC tournament. And just knowing that this is, this is our, <laughs> sorry, I'm a senior and this is our shot. We've never been and it's just been, it's a good feeling to know that I've been able to contribute to this team, so it feels really good. Congratulations, <laughs> Kaylee. Enjoy it with your teammates. Special moment. Thank you. And you, you heard the moose chants from behind. <laughs> she is uh, being a senior as well to continue on her career. That is a moment that will live on for her and uh, you know her, all, all her family for many, many years to Exactly. Come. And for all of these seniors, every day from here on out is another day to play together. This is a team that's so focused on family, playing together, being one family, one unit, and being strong as a group and they showed that this series how strong they can be and moose as they call her coming through big and we'll remember this well we talked about the blue collar attitude that georgia has a lot of that is on the seniors alex hugo kind of the sounding board there but they've had a lot of fun here and you got the sense that maybe florida playing under the pressure of the the back-to-back -back titles didn't have as much fun is that true would you agree yeah, with that? yeah i mean i think that over time you just keep hearing over and over again what are you thinking about three-peating? What about this? What about that? And it does begin to build. George, on the other hand, the underdog. We've got nothing to lose. We know we're good. We want to keep playing. We're going to play our ball game. There was never any talk about Florida. It was always, what can Georgia do? How can Georgia play? And you saw it there. The coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Lou Harris-Champer, is with us. Coach, uh, 
explain your emotions right now. Uh. I feel with joy. I, I can't be more happy for Kaylee Pailoa. I mean, she is all heart, all team, all year. I'm just so proud of her for taking her swing on a good pitch. Coach, we look back at it now, and obviously the right decision, but talk about your decision to put her in in that moment. You know, she's just a beautiful hitter, and she's so heartfelt, all team. I mean, I just, you know, Lacey could have done the job, but man, Kaylee with her opportunity right there, she just really took a great swing on the ball. And, you know, I can't say enough about Chelsea Wilkinson and the performances she had today and yesterday and the way she just willed us to get this done today. Your senior class, phenomenal. Hugo, defensively, uh, I know that's a big part of uh, what you preach, having leadership from them. Yeah, outstanding leadership uh, from the seniors. And, you know, I got to also say shout out to the Florida seniors. What a great class they are. Again, so proud of our seniors as well and our team as a whole. We, you know, we just, just really did this as a team effort. Coach, obviously two strong games here, but going into the World Series, what do you want to see him do differently, if anything? Not just do what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Can't ask for more than what happened today. Coach, uh, enjoy this one and, right. and, uh, and your kids as well. Thank you. Love them to death. 45 wins for Georgia. And let's go back to this uh, bottom half of the seventh and how it's set up. There was a close play at first base, and Maeve McGuire reaching on this one and this is really where the momentum started Maeve trying to beat this out the throw high Schwartz's foot goes off the bag but really how close did the foot get down in time Maeve McGuire called safe that energy led to this opportunity with Maeve McGuire on base a home run from Kalu Pualoa a walk up that won the game and sometimes the unlikely heroes do it, but she's been a good pinch hitter all season long. And Georgia, thinking about Oklahoma City and the College World Series, it uh, is going to be uh, an exciting trip for them from Athens. As we look at our bracket here, SEC rivals Georgia advancing over Florida. Florida State and Utah will take on the winner of that one will take on the dogs in OKC. That's currently on ESPNU. And look at the bottom part of the bracket. Auburn can really swing the bats, and uh, who knows? Maybe that's another SEC matchup between those two as the Moose in the middle of things having some fun for the dogs. So Georgia is headed to Oklahoma City, shocking the number one overall seed, Florida, 3-2 to two the final. Coming up next, the studio, and then Oklahoma and Lafayette in a weather delay. 3-2, the Dogs, winners over the Gators. That's the story from Gainesville, Florida.